Good day, everyone. Welcome to Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. I am your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 35, season two. And this is a special episode uh, because I will discuss a little bit about me and my good news. And uh, this program is brought to you by Nelson Brothers Furniture Company. And here is a commercial from 1971. your Nelson Brothers credit power, enjoy life now. Admire the 17-piece Paramount Living Room Group. Everything from rugs on the floor to pictures on the wall. A world of rooms priced the warehouse savings way. From $588 down to $244. Yes, you have credit power at Nelson Brothers South. Halstead near 65th. Cottage Grove near 63rd. 9605 South Cicero Avenue. Nelson Brothers North, Broadway near Lawrence. Lincoln Avenue near Belmont. 1751 North Harlem. Nelson's Warehouse Sales, 2750 West Grand Avenue. Open Monday and Thursday until 9 at night, Sunday 10 until 5. Nelson Brothers love me. And they'll love you too. Okay, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial from Nelson Brothers. Uh, I will discuss on the episode about uh, a little history of the company. And I will talk about some other things. Like, for example, uh, I will talk about Alex Dreyer. He was a anchorman and actor and uh, very well known in Chicago. And I will talk about uh, Canfield's Ginger Ale. And last but not least, I will talk a little bit about Henry's Hamburgers. But before I go into all that, um, today is July 1st, 2021. And yesterday, on June 30th, I went to my urologist uh, for a follow-up checkup. Uh, I took a blood test uh, the week prior. And uh, so I went there with my mother. And I waited for the urologist to give me the results of the PSA uh, results. That's like a blood test. And uh, it's very, it's excellent news. It, uh, it is, um, the results is 0.1. So it's not, I'm not out of the woods yet. I mean, it's, it's undetectable, but there's little, there's some detection, very tiny. So he's very pleased. I'm very pleased. And the reason why is about a couple months ago, I started taking a medication that was introduced uh, this past year. It was approved by the FDA in late 2020, probably around December. So my urologist prescribed it, and I started taking it in this past couple months. And it's called Orgovix. I think the other term is called Relugovix. Can I pronounce it? And I've been taking it. Uh, the first day I took it three times. Three times for the first day. Then I took one every day in the morning. And uh, that's that medication really works. It's phenomenal. And uh, my PSA before was two point four, and it just dropped fast. It lowers your testosterone. Uh, the other news that my Doctors tell me that I have to take this every day, probably for the rest of my life, or maybe about two or three years, and then we'll see. Uh, I will see him again on October 27th. Uh, I will see. I will receive more pills in the mail, or I have to pick them up at the pharmacy for a 90-day supply. Uh, side effects: uh, usually, it's like a diarrhea or going to, or. Uh, you can't hold your urination. I still have that problem, but not every day. It's getting better. Uh, and hot flashes, like menop- like women go through menopause. So uh, I had a few occasions with that, but it only lasted like a few minutes. But now I don't have that anymore. So that's good news. So I'm a pr- prostate cancer survivor, and I'm very happy. My mother's pleased, and I posted on social media, and everyone is ecstatic. And thank you for the well wishes, everyone, uh, from from my church, from my family, uh, people I went to high school with, people I used to work at America's First Travel, um, people from my old neighborhood. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. 
it's it's been horrible you know but uh there was no pain so that was just worry and when i went to the doctor yesterday my the, and the nurse take my blood pressure it went a little high i guess i was just nervous or you know i didn't want to hear bad news so uh that is good news so i'm a prostate cancer survivor and I, and i urge men you know if you go to the bathroom a lot please go see your doctor that's the first sign. Or, or if you have, uh, if you get, wake up in the in the middle of the night and you urinate, you know it's uh, it'll save your life because uh, other men don't go and it, before it's too late. So uh, because my cancer was localized, but my doctor said it was very aggressive and it could there was a good chance it would spread all over my body, but uh, it was nasty. It was nasty. He had a hard time operating on it. And I thank him for that. Uh, he saved my life. So keep your fingers crossed. And uh, hopefully I'll get off this medication in two or three years. And then and my doctor said we'll take like a holiday, like a break. And if we do that, and if the PSA goes up a bit, I will return. I w I'm sorry. I would resume taking the uh, Orgovix, the uh, the uh medication so i don't mind taking it every day it's fine you know as long as uh you know if i take it for the rest of my life i can live to be 100 that'd be great <laughs> and uh, i also found out yesterday that rod St singer rod stewart was a cancer he's a prostate cancer survivor he was diagnosed in 2016 and i forgot about that and uh he said the same message message i do please go to your doctor you know if you have any symptoms even if you don't have assistance, please go for a checkup. And uh, he had his prostate removed, and he's doing fine. He said he, it was a two-year battle, but he's doing excellent. And he's uh, almost 80, I think. Yeah, he's in his late 70s, so God bless him. And that goes for, uh, I think, Ben Stiller. He was diagnosed uh, in the early 2010s. I know. He, and... Uh, so God bless them all. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Okay. That would be all for me. And now I will talk about um, other stuff on, on my episode. And we will talk about Nelson Brothers, which you heard the commercial earlier. I'll talk about a little history of that. Uh, according to a obituary I found on the Chicago Tribune, I'll pull up. And uh, Nelson Brothers was... Found in the 1930s, and it was uh, founded by a name uh, by a man named Abe Blinder, with his father Herman, in, in the 1930s. And uh, their noted well advertised slogan was "Nelson Brothers loves me, and they love you too." So uh, I don't know where they got that slogan. Maybe I'll find out later. And they opened uh, their first store on 6310 Broadway. Uh, I think it's around uh, Rogers Park neighborhood, probably near Loyola University. And the sign read, Nelson's Brothers Moving and Storage. And then uh, they added a warehouse at 6910 South Cottage Grove. I think they moved that warehouse on Grand Avenue, I think around California. I think 2750. If you heard the commercial, 2750, I, keep, I forget. So... Uh, then they acquired the assets of the Alexander Revel Furniture Company, and they, I think they merged, and they grew to seven stores in Chicago, and they had two in Milwaukee. And I also remember the commercials. Oh, they, uh, so that was, uh, they were memorable. They used to play them during the Cubs game uh, on WGN. Uh, during the late movie on Channel 9, probably in the morning movie, the late movie, on the weekend movie. So, and then, um, and they interviewed on the 10th inning. That's the uh, show af right after the Cubs, Chicago Cubs uh, baseball game. And I remember uh, a store, it was located in 9605 South Cicero in Oakland. My mother brought her bedroom furniture there. And I think she, she still has it. And it's beautiful. And uh, it's a shame they went out of business because they were a good store. They had quality stuff. And they were f around forever. And uh, so uh, I don't know when it went out of business. Probably 
uh, probably late 1980s, early 1990s. And a lot of people remembered the stores in the Uptown neighborhood. There was one in 63rd and Cottage Grove. There was one in the Inglewood neighborhood, 65 and 65th Street in Halsted, excuse me. And uh, most of the North Side, Lincoln and Belmont. So it was, a, it was nice. And like I, re I repeat, that jingle is stuck in your head and people love it. So you can you can view commercials on YouTube if you do a, a search on them. Also, I want to mention that some of the clips I used are from are from a, a website called Fuzzy Memories TV, and that is host that is head uh, the person that's uh, in charge of it. His name is Rick Klein. He's a very good friend of mine. He finds these those wonderful clips. Uh, television clips from Chicago's past, and uh, the website is Fuzzy's Memory TV. Uh, he hasn't updated his uh, website in a long time, so hopefully he'll do it soon. And uh, if you have any old VHS tapes from the '70s or early '80s, like Betamax VHS, you can uh, shoot him an email. His email is Rick at Fuzzy D Fuzzy. I'm sorry, I'll repeat it, rick at fuzzy.tv. So like I said, you, if you have anything, just uh, you can contact Mark on Facebook. He is there, and he'd be so happy to hear from you. Uh, I might have a couple of things, too. I'm going to search uh, about time. Uh, so I will mention his name from time to time, and I, if I borrow one, I will credit it. I will let him know. So he's a very understanding man. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next thing I will talk about is uh, Alex Dreyer, and he was an anchor. He was a reporter, news reporter, commentator, and anchorman. And uh, he was born in June 26, 1916, in Honolulu. He died in March 11, 2000, at the age of 83 in California. And uh, he started on NBC. And... Uh, and he uh, he was in Germany, in Berlin. Yeah, he was in Berlin, Germany, right? And one bef and one day before, no, I'm sorry, he was in Berlin. And he was under surveillance by the Gestapo, and the Nazis, and then he left. And he left Berlin one day before the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. And he was on NBC on the radio from 1942 to 1945 on Saturdays and weekdays from 1951 to 1956. And he was known in Chicago as the man on the go. And he was the anchor man from, uh, on NBC, it was WNBQ. Then it was changed to WMQ in 1964. And he also handled the news on Today on the Farm. He did that. I wonder what that's about. Let me click on that. I was a, I was a country music uh, a show and it was a variety show and he was he was featured in there well, very interesting and that was on uh it was on nbc then in 1962 he was replaced by floyd calber i don't know if he was fired or he because he then moved to abc and it was wbkb channel seven and then you know it changed to wls in 19, in october 1968 so i don't know if he got for he was forced or quit i don't know and I remember seeing him vaguely in the 60s and 70s, and then he left uh, in the mid-60s. I think Frehe Flynn uh, took over, and then with Joel Daly as the uh, the premier Eyewitness News uh, anchors. And then he moved to California and became – oh, here we go. He moved to California in 1967, and he worked in Los Angeles. And he also became a, a career as an actor, which I didn't know. I probably did know, but I probably forgot. So, and uh, he just started in some movies, uh, a lot of movies. He was the first movie he was in was the Boston Strangler. That's in 1968 that starred Tony Curtis, and he was in TV shows like Mannix, Kojak, Land of the Giants, Heart to Heart, and Love American Style, and. Uh, he served as a chairman of the board at the Annenberg Center for Health Sciences and a board member of the Eisenhower Medical Center. And he was inducted to the Illinois Broadcasters Hall of Fame in 1989. So uh, 
he had a booming voice, like most anchor man, and uh, which I didn't know. And I do, like I mentioned before, I vaguely remember him. And uh, I didn't get the chance to ask my mother if she remembered seeing him on TV. And I think she did. She did see him during the 60s when <clears throat> during the 60s on uh, Channel 7. Excuse me, I had to get some water. So, um, so that's it. He had an interesting career. So uh, he was one of the early anchormen. So hopefully a lot of people remembered him. So he was an interesting guy. Okay, the next thing I will uh, touch base with is Canfield's ginger ale. Now, when I post something about Canfield's, particularly ginger ale, a lot of people remembered it, and they said it was the best ginger ale they ever tasted it. That even surpassed Schweppes and Canada Dry. So I think when I was a kid, I had it one time, but I don't remember the taste of it. I'm sure it was good, but uh, I drink Canada Dry, and I love that. Um, they came out with, uh, I think, Canada Dry Gold, and that's more gingery, but I tried it one time, and it's uh, very strong, so I didn't care for it. It's like, oof, no thank you. Schweppes is a little stronger, but I like Canada Dry. It's milder. You know, it's good. And as for, uh, <coughs> excuse me, for, can for a gin um, Canfield's ginger ale, it was one of the most popular fla flavors that Canfield ever had. Uh, others were um, Anna Banana. There was a Swiss cream soda. Everyone loves Swiss cream. Yeah. I like Swiss cream cool. It's just that vanilla taste. I love that. And, uh, Unfortunately, uh, I heard Canfields is still in business. You can order some in Amazon, but I don't know if it tastes the same one in the previous years. So I don't know. We'll see about that. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I just gotta stop coughing. When I talk, uh, I apologize, everyone. Every time I talk too much, uh, my throat gets dry and cough. So I'll do the best I can. The next thing I will talk about is Henry's Hamburgers. I think I mentioned about that in a previous episode, but if I did, I apologize. So I will talk about a little more about that and its history because I posted a uh, on my Facebook page on Van Chicagoland a ad from 19, from June 30th, 1961. And it listed all the locations in the Chicago area. And the one I just remembered was at 79th and Cicero. And there's a photo somewhere. I'm going to post that someday. Uh, it was from a person. I will credit him. Another famous one was at near the Riverview Park on the north side on Western Avenue. And believe it or not, the sign is still there, but, you know, it's covered. But you could tell the shape of it. It was Henry's Hamburgers. So it started in 1954 by the Brusser Ice Cream Company. Wonderful ice cream. I love that. And... Uh, it was uh, Henry was chosen on the memory of the late Henry Bressler, one of the Browners, founders of the ice cream company. And he was uh, it was modeled after James Collin hamburger handout restaurants in California, which and then it turned into McDonald's. And uh, they were cup, they were a competitor to McDonald's, both in California and Chicago. To tell you the truth, I never eaten there. Uh, I wish I did. And from according to most people, they love the food was wonderful, even surpassed McDonald's. And uh, in by 1956, they had 35 locations. And uh, that's amazing. And uh, their advertising slogans were, aren't you hungry for Henry's? Head for Henry's. And I'm sorry, head for Henry's. And it was 15 cents or 10 burgers for a buck. Sounds like a, something from White Castles. <laughs> and uh, the strange reason is around the 1970s, they were closing at a, at a rapid rate, and they don't know why. I don't know. Maybe it was change of ownership, or they didn't want to do this anymore. Or they uh, also there was rumors they didn't want to install a drive through or diversify the menus. I don't know. And there is only one location left, and that's in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Someday if I go to Michigan, maybe I'll stop by and have a hamburger. We'll see about that. And uh, so I found a menu from 19, 
was, I think about, I'm not sure what year it was. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, it was located 1300 West Ogden, Downers Grove. And uh, probably late 50s, early 60s. So I'll read off the menu real quick, quickly. Uh, they had hamburgers for 15 cents. Cheeseburgers, 19 cents. They added 4 cents for the cheese. A uh, hot fish sandwich, shrimp dinner, golden french fries. A uh, hot fish sandwich was 29 cents. Shrimp dinner, 72 cents. And uh, golden french fries, like I mentioned, uh, 10 cents. Chicken dinner, 98 cents. Vienna hot dog, 22 cents. Hot tamale, 12 cents. They're thick shapes, maybe chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. You know, the new... The standard ones, 20 cents, and soft drinks, uh, probably two sizes, probably small and large or small and mediums, 10 cents and 50 cent, 15 cents, excuse me. So I like I said before, I wish I uh, patronized that place. I'm sure it was wonderful because I'm a hamburger junkie. I, I, I would eat them every day. I really would. I, meant, I wrote a story about that on my blog. Advantagechicagoland.blog, and it mentioned all the hamburger places, uh, the most that then cease to exist. So if you if you if you uh, go to my blog, you will read the story. You'll be uh, very pleased. Okay. So that'll be all for today. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me on my good news uh, that I'm a prostate cancer survivor, and uh, hopefully it will not recur, and I would live for a long, long time and do podcast episodes for a long time. And you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'm on Instagram, Reddit. And uh, I will publish this uh, episode on my own social media accounts. I'm also on YouTube. I just started about maybe a couple, about a week ago. So you, if you, uh, you can find me on YouTube and you can listen there. And uh, as for the, you can listen at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, I don't know what else. Uh, there's a lot of them. Oh, Google Podcasts. So uh, you can listen in. And uh, I hope you enjoy today's show and previous episodes. Okay. So this is Pete Costanis, and I am. this is episode 35, season two of Vanish Covenant Stories. And I hopefully I'll record another episode in coming days. And take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now for me. And here is Ray Rayner saying bye-bye for now. Take it away, Ray. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.